assertively try and expand that back out. And, you know, I used to live my life world size, then I want to get back to living it at that, you know, level as, again. So I think I viewed it kind of as like going to the buffet table and just try stuff. Like I, you know, I went out and mountain biked in Bend, Oregon with the Oregon Adaptive Sports Foundation. And I, you know, got out with high fives and surfed and I've gone sit skiing and road biking. Yeah athletically in general just physical things that are new and make me a little uncomfortable Great. In terms of travel, um, I know that, you know, it's a recent injury, but having travel with friends and now solo on your own, what are some challenges that you've encountered specifically in regards to, you know, traveling in a wheelchair? Yeah. Um, so I'll speak a little specifically to the solo trip to Paris and to France. Um, I would say, you know, and, and, Big picture here, I think most of the challenges are, are very overcomable. It's usually some combination of, you know, asking for help in certain situations or being willing to kind of lower the shoulder um, and cope with a little bit of uncomfortableness at times. Uh, but for the most part, um, I was very surprised after six weeks traveling around at how addressable it really was. But um, yeah, I think one big one is just, you know, being in a wheelchair, um, needing to find bathrooms that can accommodate a wheelchair, um, especially in Paris, a lot of times it's downstairs in mm -hmm. a restaurant, bar or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so just a little bit of planning ahead. Um, I actually use Google Maps a ton, uh, which has a bit of a nested feature, but on any given listing, you can drill down and see accessibility of the entrance and bathroom for most establishments, which I found pretty reliable. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if a place that I was planning on meeting friends at or, or visiting alone didn't have a bathroom I could use, I would just either get there ahead of time to scope out a nearby restaurant or, I, or hotel or something that I could use. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't going to be a super long time at that place, I was, I'd uh, just use the restroom in advance, that kind of stuff. Um, similar, similar for trains and, uh, you know, transportation just, and museums, like scoping out ahead of time um, and just a little bit of forethought and planning. And it was all pretty, pretty doable. Yeah. And I think a lot of it, which is sur surprises me, I applaud you for it, um, is that, you know, your injury was recently and yet you've done so many things you've done. I can't even count how many sports activities as I was reading the different articles. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When did he have time to even digest and like and reflect on what just happened? And, you know, you've done so many things and now you're traveling solo. And where I'm going with that point is I think what makes it easier to not have it be the scary thing traveling, you know, with a dis disability is, is for you and I to travel and then document. I saw that you have some aerial views, you know, some drone views of your travels in, in uh, France, which I think is amazing. And I think that, you know, you should do more of that and document it for other individuals with disabilities to see, because now you're part of our community and, um, and I think I think that would be a huge contribution to be able to let other people see the exciting, spectacular life of traveling solo in a wheelchair, despite the challenges, yes, but it's also very thrilling. Yeah, there's a few things in there that I'd love to speak to. I mean, the first is sort of this approach that I, I have taken in the last couple of years, and it was a pretty deliberate decision kind of coming out of the hospital and it was like, well, the world right now shrunk down to the size of initially my hospital room and I, I want to really concertedly try and expand that back out. It, you know, I used to live my life world sized and I want to get back to living it at that, you know, level as, again. So I think I viewed it kind of as like going to the buffet table and just try stuff. Like I, you know, 
I went out and mountain biked in Bend, Oregon with the Oregon Adaptive Sports Foundation. I, you know, got out with high fives and surfed and I've gone sit skiing and road biking. Yeah. Athletically, in general, just physical things that are new and make me a little uncomfortable at the, you know, initial thought of them. It was just like, I know I need to press into that stuff and get uncomfortable because it's the only way I'm going to start to expand my world back out. And also figure out like in this new way of things, like what do I love? I used to really love, like I was a, a very committed, passionate distance runner, um, ran collegiately, uh, you know, I got in a racing chair into the New York City Marathon and, you know, is this something that I'll reclaim and make a regular part of my life? Side note, that's still an open question whether the racing chair is going to be a day-to-day thing. Um, but yeah, so putting aside, I guess that, that one point, which I think is very important um, and explains why I was doing so many things. Uh, but the um, second point that you got to of like the value of documenting and, and sharing of that experience, um, I need to do more of it, more than just some drone videos. Uh, I, I do write uh, a bit here and there. I don't have like a regular blog or anything I have to keep, but um, I do very much believe in the importance of that. And I think I've benefited from, cause it makes the theoretical concrete, right? Like when you see someone actually doing the thing that you're like, I wonder if I could, you know? And so I, I do a lot of like one-on-one mentoring at Creek Hospital and a lot, and a lot of sharing of story with people individually, because just for that reason, I think it helps make things concrete. And again, getting to that idea of like demystifying the unknown. It's like, once you know, someone who's done certain things, even if you're not trying to do exactly that, you uh, feel more confident going out and trying similarly new and a bit uncomfortable uh, kinds of stuff. 